Well, turning back to SVB's collapse, which draws comparisons to the banking industry meltdown in 2008. Now, the Fed in particular facing criticism for missing red flags before the bank's rapid demise. But what were those signs? Joining me now is veteran financial journalist and host of Truth or Skepticism on Tasty Trade, Dylan Rattigan. Good to see you, Dylan. So clearly plenty of blame to go around. We know that management of SVB has gotten a lot of blame for this, but also the Fed as well. What were some of the top warning signs that you think were missed? Well, I, I, it's interesting because I actually see almost no similarities between what's happening right now in 2008 and 2009, other than the fact that it's bank stress, which, it, you know, but in terms of what's causing it, I see no similarities. In 2008 and 2009, you had blanket issuance of loans that were not going to be paid back. You had no credit standards and you had and rating agencies assigning AAA ratings to loans that would be junk on a good day. In this situation, you have an interest rate inversion where the whole principle of buy short and lend long, which drives banking, was grossly mismanaged by the people at SVB. They have a long loan book that doesn't pay enough, and the short borrowing rates went from nothing to 6%, 5%. So they were screwed. But that's not a banking issue. That's a terrible management. Um, you know, everybody, if, if, unless you're, everybody knew rates were, short rates were going higher and every other bank in the country or most of them was either, either had a rate hedge on or some other accommodation in anticipation of the, that fact. It's not the first time that short rates have gone up and you have to adjust your book. And so I think that the big distinction between what's happening now and what happened then is now you're not dealing with bad loans. You're dealing with a change in the cost of short-term borrowing rates that's creating stress for banks that are poorly managed, which right now is one or two of them. The real risk is that people think that this is the same as that, and it creates a panic like that. It's like believing the house is on fire when it's not creates the dynamic of a fire that's not really there. And that's actually the biggest risk. And then furthermore, you add the Credit Suisse situation, which everybody has known for years that Credit Suisse is undercapitalized and in the weeds. And it, the, the their biggest shareholder finally cut them off. But Credit Suisse getting powdered basically is also uncorrelated. So you have bad management that couldn't manage their bank Whereas in the past, you had bad loans that had infected the entire system. And so that's a, a massive distinction. And I think that it's important to make that distinction, because if you mix them together, you create you create behavior that really exacerbates it. Like First Republic, I think, is the biggest buying opportunity on Wall Street right now. I think it's com comical that per First Republic is down 80 percent. For what? you know there's it's it doesn't even make any sense um so I, I think that the most important thing is that people don't understand why this is happening because they don't understand how banks make money and but once you understand oh banks loan money long term and then they borrow money short term and when short term borrowing rates go up rapidly which they did and long term rates or your long term yield that you're collecting is fixed you've got a problem. Now, that's something that there's right. a million ways to fix and managers do, but they didn't at Silicon Valley Bank. And Dylan, we know that a lot of people talking about the rollbacks from Dodd-Frank. You have Senator Warren here pushing for more legislation here. Is there anything regulators could have done to prevent this? Um, of course, I'm, I'm sure there's no question they they could have been monitoring risk management. In other words, if you looked at the Silicon Valley book and you're like, well, hang on a second, you guys have all of this relatively low yield, long paper that pays whatever two or three or 4% and your, your entire business model is based on 0% short-term borrowing rates forever and you have no hedge, you should do you you that you can't do that right like i mean that's something that a regulator would say you have to put some sort of a hedge on this because what are you going to do when rates go from zero to six um so for sure there's a regulatory failure there but i also think again it's political opportunism because it's because everybody was so traumatized in 2008 and 2009 for good reason 
any bank failure now is immediately associated with that, even if it has nothing, even if the catalyst for it has nothing to do with that. And so whether it's Senator Warren or anybody else, for me, that's just political opportunism. And I still look at whether it's the Credit Suisse issue or the SBB issue as an entirely contained issue. And I would even say that this is fabulous because to the degree to which inflation was an issue, to the degree to which an overheated economy was an issue, to the degree to which we were, com we were compelled to have the, the, all these Fed rate hikes, well, to the, to the Larry Fink and Ray Dalio point, I can assure you there will be a credit contraction, which would be the equivalent of all sorts of Fed rate hikes. Inflation for sure will come back and the Fed will soon be cutting interest rates. And so this basically synthetically and rapidly reduces the, the um, gas on the heat of the, the available credit, which then is, makes the entire economy slow, which then reduces inflation, which was the whole point of the rate hikes in the first place. This, this is doing the Fed's work for them. So then as we look at this landscape, then who do you think could be next? That's what a lot of people are wondering. And also when you look at what happened with the signature bank, a lot of focus on, on the crypto exposure and the risks there, but it seems to be treated a lot more, a lot more unfairly, at least some crypto, uh, crypto fans are saying, than some of the disruption that we saw in the traditional banking sector with SVB. Yeah, I mean, you know, the, the crypto issue is a different issue, and, it, and it, it, the only path forward for crypto is to be regulated, and it would be the best thing that, that would happen to crypto is for it to be regulated. I don't know enough about the signature bank situation, honestly, to say something of, of, that's really going to be useful to your audience, other than that, you know, another evidence of concentrated risk and bad management. The, the thing that destroys banks is concentrated risk, bad management, and leverage. Uh, every time. And so uh, surely it's some combination of those things, but I just don't see where this is anything like 2008 or 2009. Like the whole idea that like that Credit Suisse is the same thing as Bear Stearns and that this is the canary in the coal mine. I just think that that is wrong. And the reason I think that that's wrong is because the issue is not bad loans. The issue is short-term uh, illiquidity due to bad management because of the rise in short-term interest rates. And short-term interest rates are coming down because the two-year is now the most desirable um, fixed income asset in the world. And, you know, and, and so already short rates have come down. So that's it's, the pressure is already half what it was a week ago. And so I don't know that there needs to be a next. If anything, I would I think that buying the regional banks is the opportunity of a lifetime right now. Well, we've certainly seen Bank of America at least reaping the benefits of some of the concerns that people have seen with regional banks. A big thank you there to Tasty Trades Truth or Skepticism host Dylan Rattigan. Great to have your insights on the show today.